Everybody and welcome back to the Rockin' Beards podcast. It is episode thirty-three. That's pretty, a good pretty. fucking number. My name is HSR. What up? It's Sid, and we are here to talk about that guy who stole the Grammys from out of fucking nowhere a couple of years ago, Mr. Beck, with his simple titled album, Colors. All right, Sid. When did you discover Beck in your life? Weird Al. Um, really? Yeah. Which, which, which polka was it? I, uh, one of the polkas starts with loser. Right, right. And That's um, true. you know what? Beck is one of those artists that I've really never listened to. So, just going into that, that's that's where I'm coming from. I listened to Loser. I couldn't tell you, like, I couldn't name another Beck song. Um, me, me neither. To be honest, like, I... I've always been aware. Sorry, like I've I've always been aware of of his presence. And his influence and his and the fact that people really like him, like everybody loves Beck and like I'm down. I've never like I if it comes on, I'm never like oh this is terrible. I was like yeah I could vibe to this, but for some reason I've just never dived, dove dove. Yeah, I get you. I understand. Um, at one point when he won all those Grammys, I googled him and I read his Wikipedia page and I was like I don't know what an anti folk is. I, that's where apparently he started. Guys, if I get any of this wrong, you can correct me, but I'm admitting my ignorance off the jump here. And I listened to that, and it was whack. Not in a bad way. It was just some strange music. Um, and it just showed that this guy does not really see things in the way other musicians see things, right? No, that much is very clear. And I appreciated what he created. I don't know how much of it kind of one of those things where like you know you want to go back to it at some point when you're just like sitting around i'm gonna go listen to some of that and see how it sounds every couple of years but at the time i just wasn't ready for it whereas you know after reviewing albums i feel like i'm a lot more open-minded to music and perhaps i can see the brilliance of it now but it was just like really strongly different and then i went and put on the last album and it was just like like so modernly pop folky safe stuff not really? to say, yeah, I, I'm not to like to undersell it. I did not listen to the whole thing. I listened to a couple of songs, and this is my memory a couple of years later. But it was just honestly so well produced and polished compared to, let's say, the contrast of the beginning of his career. And I thought that was really interesting. If there was ever an artist to show the evolution and growth that we were just having a off camera discussion about, which you but, which you weren't there for, and so you have no very very little context for. It's but. fair, fair. But we had a conversation, and Beck might be a good artist to show what evolution and growth can look like over the span of a career. However, honestly, I each just he's nowhere in the realm of my world. Like I listen to, I guess, punk and rap and a bunch of other stuff, but. Somehow Beck just never ended up on the radio stations I listened to when I was younger, and the people I know don't really bump Beck albums. So yeah, like I, I, this is a legitimate question for you guys: Who do you know who is a major Beck fan? And because look, for me, like, like I said, he comes on and I'm down. And like "Loser" is a great song, and we'll get into this album, but this is actually a really, really, really yeah. solid album. Like, it's really good. Cause... But who? Do you know that listens to Beck well, consistently? Well, hold up. I just want to know. I'm just, I'm, and, I'm legitimately curious because I don't know anyone. And I'm going to assume that most of you watching probably actually are those people who listen yeah. to Beck because you're clicking on a long ass review of a Beck album. And if you are good, like I feel bad that I haven't because I really on, liked this album. You know, on the real, like it was surprisingly excellent. Like I'm going to say right now, it's not the kind of music I listen to uh, regularly. And so I'm a little ignorant to even calling genres and things. Like, I don't even know what it is. But like, just, just for but, an actual but, little bit of context, like, okay, it, so I write, just one second, uh, right? Like I write, I write, <laughs> sorry, I, I write for Bucket List, right? And we are music reviewers by trade, right? And so we've all, we, we all listen to all kinds of music all the time. We grew up on music. We grew up promoting shows, playing shows, playing in bands, listening to whatever we could, reviewing whatever we could. And I was speaking to my boss last night and we both just had a moment of like, oh yeah, Beck. We don't I, listen I was, to Beck. No one we know listens to Beck. And honestly, it was just, I was talking to Bonnie and we were just discussing the Grammy win and she's like, and then Beck won and, and nobody knew who Beck was. And it was, 
I mean, I knew who Beck was, and I thought I knew who Beck was, and then I listened to some of his music, and I was like, I didn't know who Beck was. And, and I felt that way with this album. I came in, and I was like, I have no idea. None at all. I hit play, and again, it's not in my like realm of interest, so it might be necessarily hard to be able to like sell it like I'm super excited and loved it as much as I did. But I genuinely found this album to be quite the pleasant experience. And, yeah. like, I thought I'd heard some great original music already this year. I thought, like, you know, stuff was peaked. And, and then this came. And I was like, you know what? 2017 is a cool freaking year for music so yeah. far. Yeah. And um, I, I just I don't like the cover. I want to throw it out there. I do, you want to, do you want to talk about the, the title, though? Or do you want to do the, the cover and the title at the same time? I guess we should. It's called yeah. Colors. It's called and, Colors. And so it, it seems like the, the cover itself is a weak thing to me. I don't really, I mean, it's just his face with some, a couple of colors splashed on like a painting. So in, in, in the sense that like Beck is not just a musician, but he isn't, he is an artist, right? In, yeah. in one of the truest senses, like he's not reproducing what other people are doing. He's not following any trends. He is, he is putting his own stamp on the world of art. And you know, so you know that, that, that painting, the voice of fire, no. which sold for like way too much money is literally three, lines it's like red blue red i've heard a few of these versions of things. Th there are there are these things right uh this is very much in line with that it's just kind of his face obscured by a little bit of blue and some yellow okay um in in like the the becks the the beck to what, what do you call a six-sided a hexagon hexagon it's, it's a bexagon okay that's the pun i was trying to make fair i see what you're <laughs> saying and i like the idea of colors as an album title I yeah mean, because it just, it makes me go, oh, imagination. That was like my first thought was like, I'm supposed to imagine things because somehow with music and colors, it doesn't seem such a far-fetched idea. Art maybe. But there's, like, um, there's a prog metal band called Between the Buried and Me who released an album called Colors in 2006. And I really, 2004. Okay. 2006. Sure. Alaska, 2004. Somebody correct me on that. Anyway, um, it's a great album. Uh, and, and I thought the same thing from the title of that album as I, as I did from this one. Colors implies a palette, like it, it implies a vast palette, right? Like, okay. like you're coloring, you're picking from different shades, you're picking from different, different aspects of the color spectrum. Like that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for musically with, with a title like that. Like I'm looking for something that's going to be lots of different things. That's gonna be vibrant. That's gonna be. That's gonna be. I mean, everything you're saying makes total sense, and all I'm going is, damn, I am not a visual artist in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. I don't know. That makes total sense, actually. I, uh, and, and having heard the album, I see. I see where he's coming from, and maybe I just don't get it. Um, anyway, so title track is Colors. Just starting the album intro title. Woo. <laughs> um, it's a pan flute. Yeah, and, and it was well-placed. I think it was one of my favorite parts of this song because it kicks in and you just start vibing, and it's a good post-chorus vibe move. I, I started vibing to this thing right away. Well, I did, too. Yeah, but, like, this... I mean, you were already there, and yeah. it made you vibe more, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Um, I was, even beyond that, I was like, as much as we can all shit on auto-tunes and effects on the voices and, and poorly executed ones... What he did to the chorus of this song... It was fantastic. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, it was like, wow, Beck but just I, proved mumble rap has a point. I don't even know that there are that many effects on his voice. I think he can just do that. If that's the case, I, maybe. I don't know. It sounded almost mechanical. Because I think he's just flipping back and forth from his chest voice to his head voice in such a way that, like... He has so much control that it sounds oh, like it's I different. Feel like there was some there might have been kind minimal of, editing, but some it, kind of I don't mean like auto tuning in the sense of correcting his no, singing, but like I mean there was some kind of like like splicing or like I, I hear what like you mean, but reverb I, or even I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Don't don't criticize me too much. Here. I'm I'm really curious to to hear how he does this live. I feel like this is probably the song that he's starting his current run of shows with. Maybe I hope he is because it's a but great like, opening song. Okay, we gotta pause. Something more important to talk about. I saw the greatest music video of 2017 today, <laughs> and it was slimy, and it's to this song, and it's just hands playing with slime. You don't understand. I was sitting there watching this on my, my like monitor, and granted, it is nice colors and stuff, 
but it was the most relaxing thing I have done all year was watch this four minute freaking music video of Slime. I was entranced. I don't know. I mean, it's like the perfect soundtrack to watching colorful Slime. <laughs> You need to do it. I'm going to link the music video in the description below. After our review is done, do yourself the favor of watching this music video. It is freaking awesome. Because if you've listened to us for an hour and a half, let's be honest, you have you have time to go and check out a four-minute music video. On top of that, I don't think <laughs> I've even like said a good thing about a music video in like months. And here I am raving over slime because it was so relaxing. Like it's fine. It like, <laughs> like it's well made. It it didn't it didn't do. It probably it didn't cost very much to make. Like you gotta buy some slime and a camera. No, like, but it was well. Whoever edited that had a very good understanding of the effect they were trying to create and the psychology behind it. Like it wasn't amateurly done. So maybe on like a visual side, you're right. It wasn't that expensive, but it also probably wasn't that easy because they could have fucked it up and they killed it. Back to the music. The song, the song is also could have been <laughs> fucked up, but they killed it. It was really solid. Yeah, I, it's really driving. Uh, the chorus is so catchy. I, I, I just it was so. You know what? This is repetition done right. Yeah. I feel like in a lot of cases I've hated on it, but he just knows how to deliver things differently, and the music is super dynamic, and it keeps changing, and it's so alive, and it. It's got this good funk to it where you just want to vibe and whatnot. And it doesn't sound like anything else, really. No. Like, it doesn't sound like anything else. It's 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 that, a lot of different influences, but like, you can't... It has like, a fucking pan flute, and, excellently used. Yeah. And it's not like other times where it sounds like it's forced in. It sounds like it wouldn't even work without the pan flute. Yeah, it's it's very much part of the song. It's part of the, part of the tapestry. Also, like, the whole album was produced by Beck and written and composed by Beck and the Next Dude. And I can't remember his name right now, so I'll Google it after. But So, like, it's really cool to just see how two dudes got together in a room and, and spent four years pretty much putting this album together is, is how I understand it happened. Yeah. And it's it's such a crazy experience. Like, yeah, you can tell that a lot of time, a lot of thought went into it, uh, making sure that everything is just right, the music, everything serves the song. There's no, there's no extra bullshit. It's all... And, like... There's even kind of a point to the song, but I feel like it's... I had a lot of trouble wrapping my head around Beck's lyricism because he's a really good songwriter, but he's one of those obscure dudes. Yeah, it's very abstract, I feel. And I feel like this is about, like... It could be a couple of things, and I guess that's the point. It kind of... It made me feel like it could be a drug trip shared with somebody you care deeply with. But at the same time, it could be connecting emotionally in a completely different sense of a romantic situation. And there is this almost pressing theme on this album of escaping in that moment with that person. And colors, you can almost just picture like those cliche cartoon moments where two people get together and a colorful montage happens as some cheesy shit plays. Yeah. Only it's this song playing and there's slime. And like it's that, freaking like that, awesome. Like that moment in Rick and Morty. Yeah. Where, where the gas sings the song space out in space yeah. imagination or the, whatever the it is Bex is way better than Bex that. is way better than that just putting oh, it out thankfully there. Um, um, I give it a four though because as much as it's really awesome it's it's not something I'm gonna go back to very often and I know about people out there might be like whatever but I started to start saying this is totally out of my sphere of interest it's a really well-crafted experience. I'm more interested in the music video than I am in the song at this point, which is no disrespect to the fucking song. I think it's really awesome. It's just not my favorite. Don't worry, guys. I gave it a five. I love this song. I'm going to go back and listen to it thousands of times. That's I'm okay. super down with this album. I'm, and one I'm thing... I'm not against the album. It's a freaking four on five. I'm saying it's good. Don't, for me, don't think it's bad, people. What, what I'm saying... What? Go on. One thing I'm... Okay, one thing I was going to say was... A strong album opener makes for a better listening experience overall, I find. And so if you're hooked right away uh, from the first track, then you're going to be more open-minded, especially with an album like this where there's so many changes musically, uh, stylistically, like off, like drop of a dime. And, and it's got um, a consistent groove to it. Yeah, and this is a very strong opener. Agreed. So, um, like, it, it, it puts me in seventh heaven. Sure. Not me. Down with me.
fucking Beck, man. Like, two songs in, I'm so sold. Honestly, now nah, I gotta focus on the lyrics. This was the smartest and, like, in terms of dense, intelligent language. Like, holy shit, Beck knows how to use English effectively to convey points with words that even I had to Google. And mm. I tend to know fucking everything we've come across this year. Which word did you have to Google? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I was reading it and I'm like, holy shit, that's a pretty dense... There was first two lines, there was one word that was really... So he learned the word, he forgot the word, he still loves the song. It's that's true. how powerful this is. It's so good. No, really, and it's got, like, this happy feel to it where you're vibing. And, like, what I mean is it's almost like you already get the sense that Beck's been through some shit, and he finally, and we'll get to it, I guess, in the next track, but there's a sense of freedom in the expression of this music. Like, it's almost like this explosion of relief and happiness. Yeah. Even though the subject matter that gets explored in this dark lyricism, like, is is kind of like temptation and almost darkness. Like, you know you're getting into a bad... Like, so I almost picture, like, this one-night stand with an unavailable person or he's unavailable, and you want to have that escape, that moment with somebody else, and everybody knows what happens when it's over. But you want that moment of seventh heaven anyway, and Beck's over here trying to corrupt this person into just indulging it because he needs it and she needs it or whatever. And it's got this... It's just the execution is fucking excellent. Yeah, and... I, like it's got this like Bruce Springsteen kind of '80s like running drum beat, and it's it's really fluffy. It's really simple, but at the same time, he uses like he uses the chord progression in such a way that you it, it feels happy and fluffy, and you're relaxed and you're and you're into it. But at the same time, there's still this undercurrent of of something of something darker happening underneath, and like the chorus is just seven heaven. Like it's it's just it's so fun. But at like, the same time, there's still, like, there's so many emotions happening. This guy has a serious grasp of of how to be the maestro of the situation. Like, yeah. the attention to detail is something that is, is truly remarkable here. He knows exactly when to pause, exactly when to chop a line. Exa and, and it's like, you can tell that they might have recorded this song 120 times before they, like, settled on this yeah. version. And you can just see it. It, it. Even here, we're on the second track. And honestly, I like this one more than I like Colors. I thought it was... And it's weird, because in, in theory, I should like it less, because it's even more out of my like sphere of, of what I do. But I plussed it. I was like, you know what? I found a place for this song in my life. Like This is when you're just feeling overwhelmed. Like This is almost meditation music. Yeah. I, like the, the one thing is, it is just a little bit long. That was, that was the... That's my only complaint, really. It's my only complaint. Um, so I'm giving it a four and a half on I, five. I happen to give it a four and a half on five. I thought it was, again, it's not an everyday song. Like, I feel like a five, I'm trying to be like less giving of them out a bit because I've heard a lot of music. And this is, this is excellent. This is in like maybe the top 50 songs that's come out this year. And most of this album probably can justifiably be argued into that top 50 if you really push it. Like I can see if, if his previous album the whole way through is this well constructed i see why it won the grammys like it, it really makes sense and this is a great because it's not the same track it's like it's a completely new experience like there is no blender effect on this album and uh, like through word of mouth i understand that this is what he does he he takes lots and lots and lots and lots of different genres like i have to say lots because more than any other artist more than even like queens of the stone age or any other artist that we've reviewed on this podcast, uh, he takes from everywhere. He takes from country, he takes from folk, he takes from classical, he takes from hip-hop, he takes from, you know, you name it. He's got it somewhere on this on this 10-song collection. And and I think, you know, this far into his career, it's, it's obvious that he's done this before. Like, this isn't something new for him. And it still sounds, it sounds modern, but, but it what? doesn't. It sounds... It sounds like it still matters to him. Yeah, that's Cause, it. Because, like... In a lot of cases, even if we were to take something like Manson, Manson had a high sense of confusion. And Beck here, Beck knows exactly what the fuck he's saying. Yeah, he, he knows every song he sets out with a goal for that song, and he puts the time and accomplishes. But it's almost like as much as he does that, he also, in the back of his mind, knew what the album was yeah. while doing that. And it's, 
I I have so much respect for this guy. Even if I'm not throwing fives at him, don't don't take it the wrong way. Like I plan Holden on hits. finding more Beck albums because if he keeps changing like this, there's got to be a Beck album for everyone at this point. Um, another way to look at it is that I'm so free to go listen to Beck. How many songs is this? This is three. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's one song. But like it just. Holy but, shit! But it's it so, fits together so well. I, like, I, it's like I almost feel bad now that I don't know who Beck is. This is this is. I so, do feel bad that I this, haven't listened okay, to it. Like this is a five. I have to say this. This is one of the most perfectly crafted sonical experiences of my life. Honestly, <laughs> this track, because it's oftentimes when you do get really well constructed stuff it's on more serious stuff but this is just really an explosion of i feel free to do what i want to do yeah be who i want to be but it's not like a yolo fuck myself up self-destruction no it's like take pride in who you are and accomplish it with so many flows like there's like like yeah. three distinct it, like sounds. it goes from a to b to c to b just like there's 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 the spoken word there's, there's that, that this like rock chorus there's this, like and, and it's so fun and, and it's that the whole so... time you're just like exactly it's so much fun it's just it's so joyous it's such a celebration of music and of life as cheesy as that sounds and and like for a third track in and you got to consider the last couple were a little more on the dancier side this is almost like i could see myself just wanting to like just jump around yeah and, just while and out like like, like like i wouldn't i don't know if it's like a mosh pit per se but I kind of visualize one of those safe, happy, everyone jumping in unis in mosh pits, right? Like yeah. those pop punk fun ones where you don't get hurt. And it's still, like, even on that, it's not, like, this isn't kids' music. Like, this is oh, adult no. music. There's like, so many layers to it. Like, compositionally, it's just you have to, you have to listen to this, like, nine time, or ten times just to grasp the sheer number. If your six-year-old was singing it, it would be pretty cute. Yeah. Because it, it does so have free. that... Like, there's almost, <laughs> like, no cussing on this album. Virtually none, so... Like, or a little bit, but like, it's so, it, it's almost like, I want to call it safe because it fits all of the parameters of what makes a song safe for radio, for playing in any environment, but it's not safe in the sense that he probably, it's not, he didn't even take a risk. He created a well-crafted, perfectly sounded experience that is just pushing a boundary and a frontier. So it's not safe again, in like the lame like, way of safeness. But it somehow still works. Because musically, there's so many buttons being pushed and so many new things being attempted, and they all work together. Like, this guy knows how to experiment with music and with instruments and, 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 and with different riffs and different progressions and different harmonies and, and stick them all together. And, like, you got to listen to it. Like, you just got to listen to I, it. I Do yourself even... a favor. Five. Look, even <laughs> if it's not your kind of music, even if, like, you only listen to whatever you only listen to, this is that kind of song where you put it on and everybody in the room is in a better fucking mood. Yeah. And that's that's why it gets a five. Like it's it doesn't matter what mood you're in. This song just makes you feel fucking great, man. I don't know. Dear life. Dear oh, life. you didn't you didn't get you didn't. Thankfully he had like a quote about what this song was about, so it fast tracked my understanding. Boo! Um this song is, is truly fascinating. It's basically about those moments where life kicks the shit out of you. I mean, it, it, it just, it sucks and you fight it and you try and you whatever and it just sucks. So you submit and you just kind of flow with it and then you just end up going with the, you just kind of roll with it instead of fighting it so much and understanding that like life kind of, I hate this expression, but it kind of is what it is a little bit. Yeah. But it's not like, a complete submission it's not saying like stop it's saying understand what the tones of life are and go with the flow a little little bit yeah not because there is a degree of i honestly feel like this whole album has a degree of fighting the system within it but this is saying understanding it it, it was so it was so profound like i've had quite a few l's this year as they say in the hip-hop world and i honestly feel exactly like what this song is like you just at a certain point honestly break you stop fighting it you just understand that maybe it's not fair but if you do xyz then that will happen i think this like it's really really universal the hook just dear life i'm holding on like i'm i'm still here give me give me something you know what i mean like the struggle is real i'm still here i'm with you i'm in it but goddamn sometimes 
and then and you just you just want to. It's like it's like right before you catch a break is this song. Yeah, exactly. Because he um, hasn't like I don't know if there's a story to this album. I wasn't. I was so caught up in how great the music was, <laughs> I couldn't pay attention to that. And even even at that, the the music is is still like the, there's this almost improvisational little jazz piano or little blues piano lick running through it. Um, and it's it's really light, but it's it's still really different. And that that guitar lick that comes in after the chorus is deceptively like it seems so simple, but it the it's just the structure of it is so, like you don't you don't write that in a day. Like you have to map that out. It's and on not, top of that, I, I would have to go one step further. One of the things I noticed in this song that was particularly distinct is how excellently he captured the exact emotional tone he was looking for yeah because like it's so honest like it's so honest it's it's just it's also not the most common theme really explored in music it's like there's often this doesn't have the hollywood happy ending it has a very realistic this is kind of what happens you fight forever to make sure that your life is whatever it is until you end up following what your life is like you have to at some point accept things is i kind of think what he was going for and and i don't know and that doesn't even mean give up on your dreams or anything obviously he's a fucking beck he's making albums and shit but at a certain point maybe he's decided that there's something more to the life than what he understood previously and maybe he his ultimate dream was to own a chain of fast food restaurants and now he's stuck making award-winning albums for the rest of his life like wait, god damn own a, a chain i don't know because that would be kind of cool if we found that out no i'm saying he, his dream was that but he doesn't anyway, so I you know what i mean five, he had to... this was a perfect five maybe it's a little bit because i feel like this this song was like almost written for me in this moment but I still think it, it's truly great. It, it is sonically as satisfying as the previous one. I give it a one yeah. times five. Oh. Spo I don't know what I just said. It's um, okay. No distractions. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how I can see what he did there with the song title. Cause, Cause he's he's being a distraction the whole time. Like this whole song is is, is very escapist in nature. Like, I can remember those moments where I knew I had um, a lot of priorities, a lot of things I should be doing, but then I was like, you know what, I want to go spend a night with a girl lost in a moment and forget about reality. And you can just feel like like it's almost like there's somebody he knew, and he was like, like they know things aren't right between them. It's almost like an ex-girlfriend or something. And he still wants to hit that golden goodness that he had back in the day. And, and, and they're kind of like the no distractions. What I took from it at least was basically forget about all of our history, our past, all the problems, all the things that we should be doing. Those are the distractions and we should avoid those while engaging in this giant distraction that he, he feels he needs. And that's some deep and personal and honest shit. And he does it with a certain degree of excellence. I think this song is really well made. Um, it's a little less good to me. Um, not by a little less. I'm talking like it's not the hundred percent. It it loses a couple of point like little point somethings because I found it it was a little bit long, a little bit hard to enjoy the whole way through. Like the vibe is like okay, and then the end kicks in and it's a little a little more all over the place, but it's still pleasant. It's a good like if I was at work and I was putting this album on and it came on. I'd have no problems listening to it, but I'd almost never go out of my way to do it. So objectively, I'm giving it a four and a half. Okay. Um, like, I felt the song was definitely single ready. Okay. Uh, like, I could hear this being played on any radio station anywhere. Uh, it sounds... It's it's very reminiscent of The Police, okay. um, who I love. Uh, the, only, the, only, the only thing about that, and... This is not Beck's fault, but a couple of years ago or a few years ago, um, picking parts of the police's sound uh, for modern pop radio was kind of the standard. Um, I don't remember what summer it was, but a, a lot, a lot of artists were doing it, uh, kind of taking that new, new reggae vibe, uh, and and applying it to to pop. And is that's that's not what Beck is doing here. Uh, you know, he's, this is still very much his song, his style, but it does remind me a lot of what the police did and, and 
maybe, maybe I just have a, a bad taste in my mouth just just because I remember that happening so much. Uh, and, you know, he's not ripping them off. He's not aping them. It's it's but um, having said that, it's still a really good song. It's still really catchy. It's still really fun. I still love it. I see it as a single. Uh, it's it's getting a four and a half for me, and it only misses that perfect mark ju you know just because of the similarity it's, to the police. It's, it's one of those songs, and I think it just clicked it. I was trying to remember the flow of it, the feel. I can remember the energy of the song. I can remember liking the song. But if I were to like try to pinpoint what it sounds like, it's a little on the foggier. Like There's almost a certain lack of distinction in this song that wasn't present in, in Dear Life or I'm So yeah. Free or even the earlier ones. So it's not that the song is generic. It's just one of those songs where when you hear it, you know it, but it kind of, at least, I, I don't know. It just didn't stand out as much. I think... The, but it's still a four and a half because I know that while I was listening to it, it was a really great experience. And you like you super vibe to it. But the the I, I think what I was trying to say was, like if a song reminds me of another artist and makes me want to go listen to that other artist more than this song again. You know what, you know what I mean? Like I yes. still love the song, but at the same time, like I, like I want to go listen to the police now. Like, so, so that's the only thing. And that's, that's, that's not fair. Honestly, I know that's not fair. And I know that's just a personal thing. And a lot of you guys aren't going to feel the same way. So, uh, you know, okay. How um, about this? If you guys think this song, if you disagree, just put it in the comments. So you'll educate us. We read these comments. We care about your opinions on stuff. And honestly, I have learned a lot of context behind the scenes of songs and stuff that it made me appreciate it more simply because y'all took the time to write something that was 250 words describing a subject. I love it. It is yeah. truly fantastic. Even if you don't like us in your comment, I'll still read it and appreciate really, it. For us, it's the stuff that dreams are made of. Yeah. Hashtag color mix. We have the dreams, the mix for the album colors, because it says colors mix, and we because double we have to give them the history. Because in this... 2015, he released dreams. Thanks. That was the history. That was. When let it came let out. me tell it. Go ahead. In 2015, he released dreams. So <laughs> they are slightly different in terms of sonic it's, sound. It's it's the same. It's the same. It's Weirdly the same. enough, it's a different they got mix. the exact the same. same grade when I heard both of them. No way. On Spotify, Crazy. they had um, oh. the track there. Apparently, it's the deluxe edition. Whatever. Um, so when I when I said that I'd never heard an, another Beck song, uh, I, I did lie because I have heard this song multiple times mm -hmm. on the radio since since it came out. You know, it's been out for for two years now. I did not realize this was Beck. I have it's a never great song. ever heard this song before. Yeah, don't listen to Show 'em, buddy. No, I don't. Rock um, radio station in Montreal. I bike to work these days. I don't even I don't even go in cars that often. Um, ultimately, one of the things I felt about this track was it was the best version of "Stay Woke" I have ever freaking heard. But then he felt like, it gets. It's almost like be aware of the dream state that kind of everyone's in and don't do it. And then he kind of makes the song sound like you fall asleep at a certain point. And it feels like you go into the dream state and it explodes out of it at the end of it on that transition. Because at the end of it, he isn't in the dream state anymore. It was just a part of the song to right. kind of even show I do it too. We're all the same is kind of what I took from it. And I think it's a really relevant and interesting. This is like the most, I guess, political song we've had so far because it kind of talks about. I, yeah. I mean, relatively speaking, of course, I don't know how else to qualify an observation of the dream state of society, you know. And um, I really dug it. I thought it was a really great feel. Um, I give it a four, though. It's not my favorite song on this album. I like the ones before it more. I feel like now we've kind of moved on from the stuff I was really into, and we're moving into stuff I'm more just, I'm okay with it. Um, I put it on, and with the headphones on, and if this is one of those albums where like if you play it through from beginning to end, you don't really want to turn it off. No. But when we're talking about it at a song-by-song -song level, when you're going through your playlist and you're about to hit play, that's not exactly happening here with this song when I have something like Dear Life to go to, which I'd rather go put on. Um, you know what I'm saying? But if it came on on shuffle, I'm totally not going to skip the track. So it's like it's worth having there. And that's why it ended up at a four for me. And Fair it enough. Was really is, this is subjective, right? This is my opinions, folks. And I understand that it is a really fucking well-made song with the same quality as pretty much the rest of this album. Yeah, I mean, I... You, you, you know what's cool about this song is uh, I, I read that 
he he wrote this song because he wanted something new and excite like exciting to play on tour like a like a new kind of driving song to play live uh and i think he really he, it's got that whoa which is going to get audiences singing along right like that's mm. that's what pop artists do left right and center that's how they that's how they hook you by the way was, in case you were curious as the to the w- science behind it yeah that's how pop artists get you with meaningless sing alongs but like this isn't a meaningless song and i, I think and sometimes it, it, um the sing alongs aren't meaningless no they're not but what the what bad i was going to pop artist catch you with meaningless sing-alongs. well not even necessarily the bad ones no, i mean no, i've been actually there's it's it's a, it's a interesting thing i watched several videos on the subject of repetition in music last night actually I'm going into how it, it's something about the way our brain per, perceives things where repetition done right is excellent. Repetition, even even compared to complete distinction, like we will prefer... Re- anyway, it's a it, it's it's boring to really go into the nitty gritty, but done right, it's excellent, and done lazily, it's cheap. But what I was getting to was I feel like s- some of what he does, and he doesn't do it, it's not like the, the main theme of the album, but he does poke fun at trends of, mm. of trends a little bit. Um, not directly and then proving he can do it better not necessarily do it better but but do it differently but still you know do it tastefully i know that's kind of really good it's really good it's really good and that's kind of what this song is for me like this is this is the pop jam you know, that he's taken and and turned into his own like i give this song a five i, I love is, it this is one of the first albums even, even as i'm saying i didn't give this song a five but as we're talking about this, I I would go to the show to support this. Oh, absolutely! Album. Like, I'd love I, to see I, I this show. I would actually be willing to put up some money and go see this. And I mean, I've heard some albums I liked even more than this, where I don't know that I'd go to the show. But I bet Beck is gonna kill this performance. I bet he's gonna kill it. I bet it's gonna be a great. Like what you're gonna expect from this kind of show is you're gonna see a lot of really top caliber musicians. And color, because it's called Colors. The album, of course, it's gonna be fucking Colors in my tour. Top quality musicians, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be great visually too, for sure. I mean, the, look, the guy must have a lot of money at this point. And he can probably throw is a fucking wicked at this point. Yeah, he can probably throw a crazy stage show at this tour to support the music. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 gonna be the type of show where both things are gonna draw you, you know in. What? It's gonna be the type of show to make you go wow. Uh, it's like, wow. I gotta say, wow! I was not expecting this. Um, uh, were you expecting trap? That, no. That's what that drums were. I was not. I, I'm not mad at this song. I like this song. I, I think it's fucking brilliant. So because it takes something where the subject is yellow in a negative way, and it makes it yellow in a positive way, and he flips the entire fucking script on what it is. So, so I, I brought this up before, but you know, I'm, I'm reminded of a lot of, a lot of, a little more old school, I guess, at this point, Dirty South artists like like Yin Yang Twins wait, wait, or like Little John, that 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 kind of thing. You're saying I'm reminded by it, and I'm not saying you ripped them off. And you do I, no, 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 no. That's not. The, you know, you're not in my head. You don't know me. Um, try and see. And for the next couple of songs, I feel like they really are um, reflections of the last five or six years of of popular kind of more club oriented and more ask a question what have the yin yang twins done in the last five years of music okay (laughs) fine last 10 or so years maybe or (laughs) whatever but but like you know what i mean right like they have i had no idea but anyway there's probably a better example i i don't listen to a lot of rap i'm sorry but um Um, i really just like the subject matter because he he hits the flows fucking killer like he he bounces off that beat he does it's just it's and that chorus is colin chant in a fucking beautiful way and you can just picture that like fucking environment you can picture and he, he he delivers every one of them so distinctly like it like it's it's done nicely it's not boring and I fucking, I really, I give this a four and a half on five. I thought it was, it was diverse, right? Different verse lengths, different styles incorporated into it. And he wasn't trying to rap. He no. He was just being Beck on the beat. So on I'm So Free, right? It, there's a little rap, there's a little yeah, rap verse. And even look, you go back to Loser, right? In the time of chimpanzees, I, I wasn't, was, like, he's not, he's no stranger to rap. Like, you, it's obviously but, part of his sonic palette. But, like, a song like this, like, if I had to pick 
a weakest link on this record. No. I think for me, for me, this would be it. And it's not it's not because the song is bad. It's not because the song is bad. It is a good song. But in in a style like a style like this is already very flash in the pan, right? Like like a, a, the most popular song in this style right now, no one's gonna remember in a year. Uh, here's because the there's thing. gonna be there's gonna that be that is not entirely true. People will remember the the number ones, but he kind of drew from the style, mixed in like ninety four other things, and made a Beck version it's, it's, of this it's shit. It's still his thing. It's it's and just I have to say that compared to how generic this style is, compared to how generic the subject matter can feel, the fact that Beck made something so alive and so different and so incredibly like. He just ignored the rules, like you've said, and applied yeah. it to this thing. I loved it. I give it, like I think it's <clears throat> not the best song on the album, but it's totally something I could see myself going back to here and there and just vibing to it. It feels right, but it's a weird experience. A very interesting experiment. Good it's one. a very interesting experiment, and it succeeds. Like I'm giving it a four. It succeeds. It's a good song. It's a catchy song. I can't hit a four. It's like. I, how about y'all you? just I'm gonna us. like I'm gonna remember the first six songs a lot more than I'm gonna remember this one. Oh. And it's and I just feel like stylistically this one doesn't quite fit the vibe of the rest of the I record. I feel like the rest of the album has a coherent vibe. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like the first six songs feel like a a, a nice tight thing and the next five are just or four because we I, I saw Dreams twice and whatever. So the next four are just kind of a little more all over the place, but not in a bad way. Like, maybe they fit, but I feel like they're all different. And so, it, so I, I mean... Anyway, I want to know what y'all think. What do you got? Because we have a polarizing opinion here, and we don't have a third right now to, like, settle this. So why don't you let us know if you feel that this track should be here, if you like it or not, anything like that. And hey, if you live in Montreal and you want to be a third person... Yo, holla. And then maybe one day we'll get interneted up, and we can do this remotely. Um, anyway... These types of decisions keep us up all night. Sort of. I can't feel my face when I'm with you. Who is that? That's The weekend. Who's The weekend? I don't know, but fuck, that's all I heard on that chorus. Um, yeah. Look, it... I don't care what anyone wants to say. It's the same rhythm. It's the same melody. And I don't know if he did it on purpose or anything, but it made it really, really hard for me to appreciate the song when all of a sudden the weekend started playing in my head in the middle of it. And I know I've been criticized in the past for making comparisons, but when the song is so fucking close, like back to back, you hear it and you're like, damn, that is really close. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to not hear it. I mean, look, I, 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 I didn't hear it and then you brought it up and now I can't unhear it. Like it's it is it's the hook is very similar. Um, the rest of the song is not. Yeah, absolutely but, not. And even the music behind the hook is completely different. But it almost feels like it's the same pace, the same cadence, the same like a copy paste, except in Beck's voice. But at the same time, I do feel just like with the last song, and I said this, I said you know the next two songs on the last song, and this is included in that, is still a, a very modern reflection of what uh, radio pop has become. Right. Uh, you know, there's you hear a lot of like Milky Chance, um, uh, ki- like, kind of like that the more indie side of of of, of radio pop, but it's still, but, but again, it's it's not, it's still very back and like very no, much his but own at style. At the same time, this is the first point on the album where I, it felt so, like such a clean control C control V. That's all I'm trying <laughs> Fair to say. Enough. And the rest of the song is really freaking cool, but it's another one about kind of like how he wants to be with this person all night. And it's more like the day is long, you know, lots of shit happen, and I want to just escape with you for all night and stay up. And I think this is a, this had a video, right? This is the one. Yeah, with, this like, is the, the one crazy, with a really cool video where it looks like the girl's getting messed up and she gets decked out in armor, walks through the safest orgy ever, and then a whole bunch of other. <laughs> stuff. But it's it's cool because you know she's got this armor on, and it's kind of this imagery of like fighting through a night of partying and drinking and doing drugs is a battle in and of itself, right? Which is completely and, fair. I yeah. um, I'm, I have to admit I'm old enough to not necessarily get excited at the times I actually have to go out and drink. Right? Like, like it's like, not... Especially when work is making you do it and you're like, I'm not even allowed to fuck up here, you know? Like, and, like, you have fun, but the next morning you feel like you've fought you know a war. I find is, like, I don't even get to the point where I, I let go anymore. Like, I, I don't even enjoy it to that end. And that's, again, you know, like, you see her, she's going through this, and she's drinking, but her whole mission is to, is to find this other guy who's passed out on the pool table and carry him out 
through the archway and and save him from this himself. party, and and himself and you know the metaphors, it, on metaphors on metaphors on metaphors on metaphors. I gotta give Beck credit. I don't know that I like this music video as much as the slime one, but obviously <laughs> the slime one I liked for a very particular reason. But as far as music videos go, it it's fantastic. It it's is a really, good really video. well made. And I have to recommend it. And I, it's weird. I don't think I've ever come across an artist on this whole thing where I'm actually recommending the videos I saw. Two. Two videos in one podcast he's it, recommending. It's insanity. It's like my... Absolutely. But, and, uh, but I give it a three and a half. I, Whoa! I couldn't get past Whoa. that weekend thing. And sometimes, and you've done this on many a podcast, where when something just gets in your head, points get taken off. Just because. Because you can't get past it. And he's making it personal. Um, and, uh, but <laughs> even then, the rest of the song, um, we went from a certain degree of four or five minutes, really well, longer, well-paced songs, and it's shorter. And it's more lyrically, the repetition has died a little bit except for that chorus. It's a lot more lyrical. It's a lot more like, it almost feels like the flow flipped a lot on me. And I wasn't really ready for this song. I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't appreciate it to the same degree as the rest of the album. It's still a well-made song but not as well made like i i'm giving this song a four the same song the same grade i gave the last song and i i like this song marginally more than i like the last song um just 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 because it's it's more in a style that that i would listen to on my personal time okay um i would not but i like again these two songs i feel like they very much are a pair uh they are a reflection and they're a little bit too on the nose like they're not as abstract mm, as I'm saying, some of the other I, i'd say wow is fucking abstract but i i agree with you on this one um but no again it's it's a good song it's not you know there's nothing really wrong with it okay, well, except it. for the fact that it sounds like that one weekend song that All everyone right, listened you to you know it's a really good song square one yeah buddy yeah. <laughs> is one of those songs where everything in the song is a hook like from the the the, the little piano lick that brings it in to e every vocal line is a hook uh every layer that's that's added is another hook and what's cool about it is is it kind of like after after the previous two songs i really like the placement because they really reflect they're like a mirror image of like whatever modern pop is and then this song brings it back to this like really classic piano driven rock and roll track like this could almost have been like a 50s or 60s track um it's and it's and it's just really catchy it's really short comes in does its thing punchy makes its point peace actually on that point i was not even bullshitting honestly the last four tracks of this album are all under four minutes and virtually everything else is more than four minutes for the rest of the album before it and i don't know something about beck he, he does these long songs really fucking well but i kind of the last two tracks were under four minutes uh, okay, sorry, I may have been a little wrong. Uh, yeah, but the last four on the album are, is what I was saying. Um, anyway, so the last four tracks on the album are definitely right, under okay, four yeah. minutes. And so this is part of that, and I was like, because you know what, I feel like, like I was saying earlier, the first six feel like this beautiful, well-packaged masterpiece, and then the rest of this is just extra stuff that doesn't necessarily feel like the same degree of effort was thrown into it. Um it's another track about like life spinning out of control, chasing a girl, you know, things are going to be okay in the midst of it all. Kind of like he's going through some experiences and etc. And it's got a really good vibe to it, but I feel like just as I'm getting into it, it, it kind of ends. And I, I know it's, it's strange, but I don't feel like it had enough time to really do more than hook me in. But then there wasn't as, there wasn't anything fulfilling at the end of it. Like you wanted more and you're annoyed that it didn't give you more type thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's what I got out of this. And it's weird. Cause normally these five, six minute songs, sometimes you're like, yeah, Fuck. Okay. but, but back here, he, it, cause every song does have that vibe and I wanted more and I, it was too short. I was just like, I was just thinking, cause I really like the title. Uh, and I like the title because it works on a lot of different levels. Like, it's a really basic song compared to the last couple that were really, really, okay. really, like, there was a lot going on. There was, and this one is just, like, it's 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 just kind of kind of free-flowing music, right? Like, it, it's it's really effortless. 
Okay. Uh, it's square one stylistically, you know, back to that classic rock and roll. Like there's there's nothing new. Like this is kind of like the the building blocks of modern music. Uh, and it's it, I I gave this a five. But that's fair. I give it a four. I'm not even saying it's bad. I'm saying that I don't really like short Beck songs. Is what I'm discovering because I haven't felt like the last couple. I feel like I haven't enjoyed them as much. But and don't it, don't you feel like like that's what a song should do is leave you wanting more but not in a not always sometimes like when I, sometimes there's wanting more in the sense where i want to hear it again but not wanting it more in the sense where i feel like it's a dissatisfying like there really wasn't enough of this to fill what i was looking for so like if i'm picturing this coming on like beck's the kind of guy that has a five six minute groove feel that I, i'm noticing and when i consider where i'm listening to this you know you get into the vibe you're getting into it and then it just ends but and that that and it's not a bad thing, but this is a preference thing. It's my opinion on on my like what I'm going for out of it. So I understand that it, in other people's versions it's different, but for me, I, that's that's where I was left with on this. So another thing, uh, you know, we've we've reviewed some albums that were just five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven mm -hmm. minutes, five minutes, five minutes, all the way through, and you're just kind of like. You could you could have you could have thrown some shorter you know songs it, on this this one is, like it, it's a nice counterbalance. The first so half is some really longer songs, like and the, the second half is some. That this album's like about forty minutes. Right? Yeah, it's it's and, a and, it's a perfect length. And I like the fact that it's only ten tracks. Yeah. Because what I'm starting to appreciate more, I think, is in this world where so many artists are trying to put out as many songs as possible. There is no that, fluff on this album. And like, that's it. It could, it's it's kind of like a Nas Ilmatic. It was so to the point that yeah. it ended up being regarded as one of the greatest. And this is cool. Like you're not at all feeling like there's anything bad on it. Like even even the track that I was like, what did I say? I said I felt like it was the weakest link. Like I I wouldn't want to get rid of that track. No, no, like no. it should stay on the album. It it does belong just here as much he as. Because he accidentally ripped off the weekend. It doesn't make it a bad song. It's still a great hook. Yeah, we're talking about different songs, but like. Yeah, I know my 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 version. Yeah. It was related anyway. <laughs> so yeah, four for me. I I think it's cool. Five. And then uh, there's one more that I guess we're going to talk about, and it's called uh, Fix Me. So Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing. Wait, wait, that's not the right review. Um, so the Orville. Um... Anyway, uh, so fixing stuff up here is what we're doing. Uh, this is a really cool way to end the album. Like yeah. I, I, I thought it was an album closer when I first heard it, and then I, because I saw that there was a track 11 on my deluxe edition on Spotify. And I was like, this, why isn't this the closer? It didn't click Dreams was the same song at that point. And uh, it caused a sense of finality. Like It does. Like there's a degree of him looking for this escape in someone else that's present on multiple tracks on this album. And it's almost like now he's understanding that this chase is really about finding someone to fix him, but who he can also fix. And it's like, it's almost like recognizing this isn't the right thing to do, but acknowledging this is what drives him or what is making him happen. And it's got this calm-esque feel to it and it, it goes through, but and it gains suffers from the I want more when it's done because it's too fucking short feel to it. Like, I don't understand why they, they just had to shave off two minutes off the, like, this track. Like it could have been like, a, this could have turned into like seven minutes of epic and I probably would have vibed the whole way through. You know what I'm noticing about Beck a lot no, I, I will tell you, sir. Okay, uh, is that he 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 has a serious focus on simplicity, okay. um, and that's not to say that the music is simple because obviously it's not. It's but not. it's 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 simple parts layered on top of each other in such a way that it makes the compositions more intricate, uh, and and he applies the same thing to his titling, like the the the, the album title, Colors. Very simple, but it says a lot. Uh, and you go back and you look at the titles of all the songs and they're very simple, no more than two words or three words, and they really sum up what the song is, right? And this one's no different. Fix Me, it's 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 kind of like this, this last plea. It really works thematically with a lot of what the rest of the album has been about, which has been kind of like coming to terms with what life is. Nothing is perfect. You kind of have to live with it. And now maybe if I could find someone to help me live with it a little better... Uh, musically, it's just this really atmospheric, uh, really great come down after this basically trip of an album. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this one gets a four from me just me just too. because it, I don't 
remember it necessarily after you know it's not the most memorable thing i give it a four because it's a little short it is really great and it's exactly what you said but i almost feel like it it is a good closer for the album but not the closer i would have wanted on this album i feel like i wanted something epic and triumphant and instead he gave me something that made more sense it's the closer the album deserves right but no, no, not no. the one it needed right now but it's like it's totally probably the right choice i mean he's fucking back what the hell do i know <laughs> but i was hoping for something a little more triumphant because honestly it ends on such a depressing fucking tone but i think that's the point really and, and, and it's fair and maybe that's what I'm supposed to be left with, and I'm, I change my mind in the future. I'm fickle sometimes, <laughs> but really, I I found it a little somber, and it was okay. It was it was still a great song. Nothing on this album is bad. Every song is fucking good. No, they're all so really good. Far. And I think on the whole, it really succeeds at at setting the tone of of colors of of different layers of music, different yes. colors, different styles, different. Yeah, you know, it, it does that so like, well. It shows that Beck isn't... It, like, there's this league of, of artists who are just so dynamic that they can do anything. Yeah. And Beck is clearly there. He, he's one of those... He could be in the debate of who's the goat of this style. You know, like, greatest of all time. It's a rap thing. And he could be like a goat out there in I the world. I did not know that. Um, I gave this album like a, a 4.35. I thought it was fucking great. It's a, it's a classic of sorts. It's not my kind of classic, but it's really something... So that made me want to go listen to more Beck. And I, I'm really happy that we did this album. Like, when I looked at it, I was like, yeah, people are going to click on the Beck video. And I think but, what's, what's, what's cool is, is that for a lot, of, a lot of Beck fans, this may not be their favorite Beck album. It may not break maybe, maybe ground the way past Beck albums have. But for us, just coming into it, this album was... Eye-opening and, and just like a great listen. And hopefully, like this, this review actually encourages some of the people who follow other types of music or anyone who's been following us for a minute to actually go take some time, leave your comfort zone, and, and jump on this shit because it is, it's a fucking trip. If you're yeah. into things that make you not sober, I encourage you to do that before listening to it because it'll definitely enhance your vibe. However, I was very sober when I listened to this, and I. I loved it. I, w I wasn't ready to turn it off. Like, I had other things to do, but I See, had to keep listening like to this. See, it hits everyone. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I, I, I didn't give it a grade. Four and a half for the whole album. Yeah. Grades. That was important. Um, that was fun. I really liked it. I, w I was not expecting to, honestly. I was expecting to be like, fuck Beck. No. <laughs> I was so wrong. And I'm happy. I like being wrong when it's like this. Yeah. I mean, this album is definitely going to win awards. Uh, it's um, gonna it's gonna get noms. It's gonna get nominated. Wins. I think it'll probably win something. 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 Maybe um, a few things. Maybe. I will see how the singles perform compared to the album. I uh, ultimately, I we really appreciate all y'all watching this because without you, there's no reason to even do this. So thank you for coming here and watching some guys on a couch. I like you platonically. It's true. If you guys uh, dig the video, please hit the like button. And to quote the Jake Pauls out there, smash that subscribe button. I wanted to see how it would sound to do that. Keys to success. Uh, major key. Alert. Coming. Um, we the best comment, for music. Comment below. <laughs> let us know what you think. Um, are there any albums you're excited coming out for this? We are primarily trying to follow new albums here. We are compiling a list of any of your requests. We will figure that out next year. In the meantime, be patient with us. Much love. Peace.